the Emancipation Proclamation, page 215. On January 1st, 1863, in the third year of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln presented a proclamation declaring all slaves in the U United States to be free. The previous September, Lincoln had decreed an ultimatum to seceding states, return to the Union or all slaves in those states would be declared free. Although the Emancipation Proclamation is widely regarded as pronouncing the end of slavery, its overall effect was more of a symbolic gesture because states that had not seceded from the Union were not included, and the proclamation had no power to physically free slaves. However, the proclamation opened the door to freedoms later realized by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. In this sense, it was an important beginning for the freedom movement. In addition, the Emancipation Proclamation permitted former slaves to serve in the army to fight for their own freedom. <coughs> the Emancipation Proclamation, Abraham Lincoln. Whereas on the 22nd day of September in the year of our Lord, 1862, a proclamation was issued by the President of the United States, containing, among other things, the following, to wit, that on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within, within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons, and will do no act or acts to repress such persons, or any of them, in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. That the executive will, on the first day of January aforesaid by proclamation, designate the states and parts of states, if any, in which the people thereof respectively shall then be in rebellion against the United States. And the fact that any state or the people thereof shall on that day be in good faith represented in the Congress of the United States by members chosen thereto at elections wherein a majority of the qualified voters of such state shall have participated shall in the absence of strong countervailing testimony be deemed conclusive evidence that such state and the people thereof are not then in rebellion against the United States. Now therefore I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, by virtue of the power in me vested as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States, in time of actual armed rebellion against the authority and government of the United States, and as a fit and necessary war measure for suppressing said rebellion, due on this first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, and in accordance with my purpose, so to do publicly proclaimed for the full period of 100 days from the day first above mentioned, order and designate as the states and parts of the states, wherein the people therefore respectively are this day in rebellion against the United States, the following, to wit, <clears throat> Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, except the parishes of St. Bernard, Plaquemines, Jefferson, St. John, St. Charles, St. James Ascension, Assumption, Terrebonne, La Fourche, St. Mary, St. Martin, and Orleans, including the city of New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, except the 48 counties designated as West Virginia, and also the counties of Berkeley, Accomack, Northampton, Elizabeth City, York, Princess Anne, and Norfolk, including the cities of Norfolk and Portsmouth, and which accepted parts are for the present left precisely as if this proclamation were not issued. And by virtue of the power and for the purpose aforesaid, I do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of states are and henceforward shall be free, and that the executive government of the United States 
including the military and naval authorities thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of said persons. And I hereby enjoin upon the people so declared to be free to abstain from all violence, unless in necessary self-defense, and I recommend to them that in all cases, when allowed, they labor faithfully for re reasonable wages. And I further declare and make known that such persons of suitable condition will be received into the armed service of the United States to garrison forts, positions, stations, and other places, and to man vessels of all sorts in said service. And upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice, warranted by the Constitution upon military necessity, I invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God.